It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Bragby Conway Brewery and this is a bottle of their Honey Fair Golden Honey Ale coming in at 4.8% ABV in a 500 milliliter bottle. There's a look at the label. Lots of honey on a mountain kind of hillside range there going on. Uh, North Wales. Proudly crafted in Wales, it says. Uh, we've got a black bottle cap, 500 ml bottle. Let's get the beer out into a glass and see what we get. Nice bit of smoke on the bottle opening. Beer in the glass. Nice glug on the pour. Nice carbonation. Look at that carbonation. Now, I've reviewed a couple of these Bragdy Conway beers uh, very recently. I mean, like half an hour recently. And what I found is that a lot of them, or well, the two beers that I've reviewed are bottle conditioned. There's quite a bit of sediment in the beer. Now, you could choose to drink the beer like this, rather clear, two finger white head, good levels of carbonation. This is how the kind of Worthingtons, the Boddingtons, the Carlings, the Becks of the world would want you to look at the beer nice and clear and whatnot. But we don't, drinking craft beer, we don't live in that world. We don't live in pasteurized filtered beer land we we live in we live in flavor a world of flavor so let me show you what the beer is going to look like when i mix up this last little bit of kind of sediment and chuck it in look at that look at the difference there there'll be a small minority of people watching this video who are absolutely horrified at this stage. Uh, they're wondering what I've done to my beer. Um, but what I've done really is added loads of vitamin B and loads of flavour to the beer. You don't drink with your eyes. Never, never drink with your eyes. Always kind of drink with your mouth. Which is all you can do theoretically anyway you can't drink with your eyes anyway so why look at the beer with your eyes and go oh i'm not gonna like that maybe maybe close your eyes maybe get that last inch of beer and <laughs> close your eyes or, or drink it in a blind taste test because you'll probably go oh this is really good tasting beer and then open your eyes and go, oh, but it's cloudy. The majority of people watching this video, though, will be looking at the video now going, OK, this is this is modern craft beer. Lots of craft beers are now hazy. And they can live with that. That's fine. They understand there's more flavour. They understand there's more going on. So uh, amber in colour, uh, one finger white head, good levels of carbonation rolling up the glass it is it's slow moving carbonation actually it's more of that kind of yeast suspension i'm looking at uh, let's get the aroma do you know i love hops in beer i love Porters and stouts and IPAs, saisons. Do you know the, 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 the biggest, I think, struggle for brewers is to nail honey beer. Honey beer, it rolls off the tongue. It sounds fantastic. But there's something about a honey beer that I find them very dry. You can almost smell the dryness. On the aroma. They never quite stick. 
they're never extremely popular kind of styles of beer and I find that a shame but I think it's the dryness the natural dryness that when you add honey to a beer causes to that beer that makes people go oof just a little bit and I'm almost doing it myself but anyway let's dive in see what we get Yeah. It's a funny start. I think honey costs so much money that this is already being bought at a supermarket for four bottles for three. Four for three. So it's already been kind of, it's already part of a deal. And, and of course, Buying this from Morrison's, um, I'm just going to talk about the Morrison's dealer for now. They probably approached Bragdy Conway and they said, look, we'll give you a pound a bottle or, or whatever they get for their beer. So Bragdy Conway then have got to go away and produce a beer for that price point and be able to make it work profitably for the company. So because honey is expensive, you're not really in a in a kind of... And I think this is the problem with honeybees in general. Is you're not you don't have the ability then to really add a, a, a stack full of hops to the beer because of the price of honey, because of the amount of honey you put in the beer. And as much as I like the sound of a honey beer, or I've had in the past honeycomb beers. I've even had kind of like chocolate honeycomb beers and they sound terrific because if you eat like chocolate fudge honey in a, from a sweet shop or if you have a honey sweet or a honey, you know, a jar of honey, or honey on toast, it's wonderful. But in beer, I've never really... It should work, but it kind of doesn't all at the same time. It's incredibly drinkable. It's incredibly refreshing. You pick up the malt build, you pick up the biscuitiness, the breadiness, you pick up all of those lovely complex malts. There's a little bit of pepperiness and spiciness from the hops on the back end. There's that sweet honey flavour that comes through. But it's all a bit flatliney, if that makes sense. The honey doesn't jump up and shout enough to say, hey, taste honey over the malt. And the malt doesn't shout enough to go, hey, taste the malt over the honey. And you end up with this kind of middling, meddling, kind of trying its best to succeed, malts fighting against honey. All of the flavour becomes kind of one thing. Beer. It's a, it's a real shame because hops work so well in beer because... The malt is sweet over here, the hops are bitter over there. So you're getting two distinctive flavours from your beer. You get a, a, a bitterness, a spiciness, a pepperiness, orange peel, grapefruit, fleshy blood orange. And then, of course, you're getting that malt, that biscuitiness, that breadiness, that, that oatiness in certain beers, that nuttiness in certain beers. But this is like two big flavours hitting each other and just not deflecting off each other. Just becoming one thing. And don't get me wrong, I could drink pint after pint of it. 
it's lovely, it's drinkable, it, it, it's tasty. But here's the thing, it's not very memorable. It's not something that's going to stick in my mind for years to come. I've drunk many, many honey beers over the years. And I couldn't stand here today and pick one. I couldn't name one. Even though I've probably drunk 30, 40, 50 honey beers over the years, I couldn't name one. It's completely unmemorable beer. As good as it, as, as good as it is, I mean, yeah, I could drink lots of it. And I think that's why IEPA, I think that's why all this kind of New World stuff is very memorable. Because it's so different, it's so unique in its in its kind of flavor profiles but it, it's a shame going back to it it's a shame because it's just such a tough beer style to get right honey beer honey ale Uh, honey aromas, soft bitterness and a clean tasting finish. It's been brewed with Challenger hops. Um, all our beers are bottled at source and in small batches. They undergo the minimum of processing so they are unfiltered, unpasteurized and naturally carbonated. We do this because we believe this produces the best taste in beer. 4.8% ABV, 500 milliliter bottle. Yeah, I'm ready to rate it. You can probably tell what's coming. Um, I've drank three beers from Conway Bragdy Brewery today. Uh, the Welsh Pride, which I thought was terrific. Uh, the Clogging Gold, which was, I thought, just as terrific. Interestingly enough, um, the Welsh Pride was 4.3%. Uh, the Clogging Gold was 4%. And this honey beer here is 4.8%. And I feel there's more miles per hour in the two previous beers that I've reviewed. I feel there's more oomph, there's, not, there's more punch, there's more stuff going on. But it's not, it's not the brewery. It's not the brewery, I promise you. It's the beer style. I don't know of a brewery yet who have absolutely hit the nail on the head with a honey beer. I personally think it's probably the price of honey. It's far too, it's just an expensive product. And when it becomes that expensive, you can add a load of hops in there to kind of, cause hops are expensive. They can't get everything into one bottle because the bottle of beer would be five pounds to buy. And they're not able to brew it at five pounds a bottle because it's in a four for three range, price range in, in, in Morrison's. So, yeah, um, tough one. Tough one, that. But um, all the same, it's not worth kind of like complaining too much about. It's still a decent beer. It's just not very memorable. Good lacing. Sweetie kind of honey aroma. Honey taste. And it makes the mouth feel kind of cloyny and thick as well. Doesn't really help the mouth feel too much. Yeah, shame all round. Shame all round because every single beard I've had from Bradley Conwood Brewery have been kind of top of the pops. They've been really good, really good quality beers. Um, but this one... If you ask me what this beer's name was next week in seven days time, I probably couldn't tell you. And that's a shame. Six out of 10. Six out of 10 from Relo Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.